Hi guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today I want to take you for a walk around a Shore Track 18 plus 4, 16,000 pound heavy duty gooseneck gravity tilt equipment trailer. So let's take you for a walk around this unit. Everything pretty much you see here is going to all be standard equipment. There's really not a whole lot to add to this. Uh, lots of features. We do also stock this in a full deck 22 foot power tilt uh, generally as well, but this gravity uh, is the more common of the two. So again, you've got an 18 plus four. 18 would refer to the tilt. Four would be the stationary. And to be clear, you've got about 33 inches of uh, tread plate at the rear, only 24 counts. So it's almost more like 19 plus four uh, for those keeping track of the little details. It's got a I-beam neck and upright. It's got a full toolbox and dual 12K jacks. Jacks on these are bolt-on, so they are easy to replace should you ever need to do so if you've never had a 12k jack turn your face when you crank the handle because it will come up at you again you've got the i-beam you've got your uh, doubler or neck gusset on the neck they put a gusset plate on your goose of course your safety chains with your safety chain holder uh, like every gooseneck or i shouldn't say any more i guess we do have three inch balls but like 99% of the ones in the market, this has your traditional 2 and 5 16 inch gooseneck coupler. If you've never had a gooseneck before, it is spring-loaded. Then you just set your, set your pin. Uh, two set bolts on your neck. Gives you your torque spec and max capacity. It's got your traditional safety breakaway cable uh, to hook up. You do have four different neck settings, but this is set standard for stock height on most every pickup truck. Be fairly unusual to have to <clears throat> adjust the neck. Full width toolbox, there's a key in the back side to lock it, it is lockable. You've got your reinforcements in addition to your gussets or doublers, you've got reinforcements on the back of the neck, and you've also got your spare tire mount uh, with your reinforcement there as well. So Short Track says this weighs 4,800 pounds empty. Sounded just a touch high to me, but I'm going to go with their number. We're going to come to that number by looking at the GVW, which is 16,000. And it's got tandem 8,000 pound axles. And they're going to give you a payload of 11,200. So 16 minus the 11,200 gives you the empty weight of 4,800 pounds. Now what that does not include in the 11,200... Mind you, 11.2 is what you're going to be able to haul on the tandem trailer axles is what the pin weight weighs. So technically, every scale, you're going to pick up probably 15% pin weight, which generally is going to come out, I'm sorry, 15 on a bumper, 22 on a gooseneck, 22% on 16,000 is going to be about 32 or 3,300 pounds. Uh, it's going to actually, somewhere around 14,000 would be your, I'll say, legal scalable payload on a unit like this. Now, a couple of things we like on shore tracks. We do have access to different manufacturers that will make a trailer like this, but we generally tend to do a lot of these heavy duties with shore track. There's about three or four different things we really like. One would be your tires on these are going to be a 17.5 with a solid wheel. A lot of manufacturers will do a 16-inch with a 14-ply tire. That would be the same rim that's going to generally be on your 10-ply tires. This 17.5, I call them a solid. They now have mods, I guess, to make them look sportier. But if you look at the meat on that wheel, that's a serious wheel. Uh, it's also a 17.5 tire, which is a 16 ply. Uh, generally, they're going to be rated for somewhere shy of 5,000 pound a piece. I think they're normally 48, 48.05. So you times that by four, you got a little over 19,000 pound a tire on a 16,000 pound trailer. A lot of times these are the same tires you'll see on your super single 10k axles so you've got uh, more tire than what this trailer would call for it's also got the heavier uh, one and one sixteenth studs uh, i'm sorry the lugs with the uh, 5a studs uh you've got nitrogen filled tires and this has the nicer valcom caps instead of the plastic caps you often see uh, these caps also generally would be used for oil, but Shore Track elects to go with grease on their 8K axles currently. Uh, probably not a bad idea. While oil is a great setup, uh, grease is, I'll say, less maintenance for the guys that are, I'll say, less prone to service their equipment regularly. Oil is great for an over-the-road guy putting a lot of miles on, 
uh, but generally for the amount of miles most of these type trailers see, uh, the grease works just as well and requires less maintenance. Uh, I did already put the bed up, but if, uh, if you're curious how it works, uh, there's a latch on both sides, just has a, a bar. Typical short track fashion, very simple for your lock mechanism. I see some manufacturers make this more difficult than what it needs to be. Very simple setup. Uh, about four years ago or so, short track went to a little bit different setup on how the fender attaches to the frame. Um, basically, everything's tied together through this fabricated part. It's a pretty slick setup. Um, you've got your fender gusset. You've got your double broke fender instead of your single. Gives a little more strength. Tie downs, we've got the stake pocket, rub rail. Notice this is a four inch ring, not your traditional three inch ring on there. So uh, specific to the fab part, couple little things Short Track does different. Some manufacturers, the fenders will rise with the trailer. On this, they stay on the ground. Uh, not a major objection that many customers ever have a problem with, but you'll notice the bed on this is about 76 inches, give or take. Fender to fender, you get about 82. Um, so some other manufacturers will actually do the frame same as this, but they'll do a fabricated part out and down, and then the fenders would attach to that, and that's why they go with the fender. So Short Track does... Uh, it's one of two ways to do it. That's how they do that setup. Now, one of the reasons we really like their heavy duty units, they go to an eight inch uh, tubular bed frame and an eight inch uh, channel mainframe. Uh, and then this unit here uh, actually has uh, I-beam coming back to the goose. So a lot of manufacturers on these will do a six inch, same as they do their 14 Ks. Short track substantially increases frame size. They understand that Generally, these 8K axle units not only are handling heavier equipment, but generally they're going to get a higher duty cycle user. Uh, this is a type of piece of machinery that normally is going to go out regularly, not once a month or similar. So as this is a gravity, it's got a single cylinder underneath. It's going to be a cushion dampener, so it's going to cushion down as you load up. The faster you load and the heavier the machine. It's going to come down a little bit quicker but again it is cushioned this isn't a slam slam down type tilt trailer so as i mentioned this is an 18 plus four so you got your four foot up front ideal for putting uh, a bobcat bucket or a small attachment post hole digger etc and then notice tying the uh, uprights to the frame you've got another gusset and piece of tube running across this unit is powder coated it's also got the bullet LED style lights. So I mentioned earlier, well, I guess two of the several things we like better on short track on the heavy duties, the 17.5 tire with the solid wheel. Uh, they go to the increased frame where a lot of manufacturers don't. The other one, unfortunately, I'm not very easily gonna be able to show you, but short track uses, and maybe I can zoom in. They use a true 8,000 pound axle, meaning this has the same uh, brake assembly that's going to be on uh, a tandem dual 10k. It's got a three and three eighth inch brake. I wish I would have one here to show you, but it's got about three times more uh, thickness on your brake pad, and it's got a 50% water drum. It's a three and three eighth instead of a two and a quarter. It makes a tremendous difference. I would guess maybe half the industry uses the bigger three and three eighth, and half uses the smaller two and a quarter or two and a half inch. Uh, what some will call a hybrid 8k axle so this is a true 8k axle it's very important because a lot of folks that come to this trailer could probably legally scale and payload on a 14k but they want the heavier running gear the tack tires the frame and the brakes so if you're buying a unit with 8k axles that doesn't have those kind of wonder what you're really getting for your extra money and generally short track on that 8k axle is about the same price upgrade cost as the manufacturers using the smaller tires, brakes, and smaller frame. So again, we feel like it's a good value for anybody looking for that 8K axle upgrade. I'll walk up it just to give you a little bit of an idea. So you got your D-rings at the rear. Probably the only thing some folks might need to do is throw a couple extra D-rings. You kind of got about eight foot of span where you really don't have great tie down points if you've got any need for a mid, uh, mid trailer tie down. 
So I'm probably not quite 200 pounds, not quite enough to get this to really want to come down very fast. We're heading uh, into the winter here in Pennsylvania. It's about 40 degrees out. So thicker oil, not enough weight. It's a slow ride down. So as I said, you get a bigger machine, it's gonna come down, uh, gonna come down quicker. Uh, standard deckings, a two by six pressure treated pine. We do occasionally do an oak upgrade on these. Uh, oak is uh, one of the reasons we do it. It's just, it's a fairly economical option with short track, uh, but it's also gonna give you more longevity, but a little bit of extra traction going up uh, the ramp or up the tilt. So we do it on all of our tilts, but it's more important on the deck overs. You can see here on these low profile fendered tilts, this is only gonna be about an 11 degree angle, so it's not very steep at all. Um, more on the deck over tilts where you're about a 15 degree to 17 degree angle. Uh, that little bit extra traction on the rough uh, oak is sometimes important. This is offered in different configurations, but this is by far the most common. Uh, they offer an 18 plus four. You can also get it in a 16 plus four. And then uh, we'll do generally a 22 foot full deck power tilt uh, of this model. If you have any questions on this unit or any of our other trailers, feel free to give us a ring at 717-220-4220. Or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com.